good afternoon everyone welcome to this new year wherein you are going to appear for your foundations or you are going to be ready foundation ready okay so i uh, wishing you a very happy new year uh, have fun have uh, uh, study well have a great health okay so good afternoon avni humera samir uh, tambeshwari nasrat simran okay a very very good afternoon to all of you and uh, from today <clears throat> i'm going to take your uh, uh, some chapters of uh, mathematics portion okay yes so let's uh, talk about what we have today okay oh yes joy anuj vaishnavi vidhi priti md vishal paras anuj pari pavitra bhavyashri and atul a very good afternoon yes thank you anuj for wishing me a new year okay i have a little cold so maybe <laughs> if you have any problem just let me know when what you want me to repeat okay so uh, now the most uh, anticipated question for any chapter is what is the weightage okay so let us first talk about the weightage let us get the thing out of our uh, uh, like system and what you must do is you must try to enjoy each chapter <laughs> once you enjoy the chapter once you are uh, like you got a grip on the chapter what will happen is you will be able to do better and then you don't have to worry about the weightage okay because this is only a broad guideline so um, business mathematics consists of 40 marks out of this this first three chapters 1 2 and 3 that is the ratio and proportion equation matrices and linear inequality <coughs> consists of 20 to 30% okay so if i consider 30% so 30% of 40 uh, is 12 marks okay so 12 marks out of these 12 marks there are three chapters so 12 by 3 so four marks okay so we we can expect uh, the linear inequalities uh, in one variable in the solution solution space and optimal solution to uh, have around four marks of weightage okay now what i would suggest is that irrespective of what is written over here first chapter first three chapter that is ratio equations and linear inequalities are beyond the marks because these are the concepts that you will need everywhere okay if you are not able to solve equations okay and uh, like in um, differentiation or you going forward in statistics also you know you have big equations and you have to put it in the formula you must know your bodmas rules and all those things together you know are going to give you uh, a grip on the whole mathematics and statistics portion <coughs> so always for these three first three chapters make sure you are you are very much okay with all the concepts okay and then you will be able to do well in the other chapters also so even though the voltage you may feel okay linear inequalities is four marks or equations is also four marks so but it is beyond that like in differentiation integration when you finding area under the curve okay all those things so you must know whether it is less than more than okay those type of concept where there is a maxima minima okay so i'm not trying to scare you okay definitely not but i would like you to understand that these are the concept that you help you not only in the foundation but later on when you are into your finals you know you are doing financial engineering and you are doing uh, <laughs> financial management on those type of things also you will be um, this whole thing this whole concept that you have made very um, well you've done very well right now is going to help you Like you say in Hindi, ले, आप अपनी नींव पक्की कर लीजिए ये तीन चैप्टर्स जो है उसमें आपको बहुत अच्छे से अगर आपको कॉन्सेप्ट क्लियर हो जाते हैं उसमें उसको कितने नंबर है उसको कितने मार्क्स है उसके पर, परे जाके अगर आप सोचेंगे तो आपको डेफिनेटली इसका फायदा होगा ओके okay? <coughs> 
ओके अर्शदीप मनीष मोनीष दिया यस अर्शदीप गुड आफ्टरनून नैन्सी यस किंजल ओके दीप सर्वश साइनी रेणुका अनी अमल लक्ष्मी प्रियंका लिसराने विस्वल ओके यस विधि यस विधि Yes, Samiksha, welcome here. Even though it's your first class, you can you can pick up because this is a new chapter that is starting, and also you can watch the videos earlier videos. Okay, Dheeraj. हाँ, हूँ मेरा विधि है. हमने हिंदी में भी बात कर ली. Yes, Kishan. Yes, Anugha, Madhu, Akanksha, Hindi Gauri, Hindi Kumari, Mistri. Yes, Mania. I have told you the uh, weightage of the first three chapters. Sachida, Sachida Nanda. Yes, Tania and Nikita. A very good afternoon. Yes, all of you, welcome back. <laughs> so now you have studied what are equations, right? And so now we are going to study what are linear inequalities. Okay. So linear inequalities are mathematical expressions. Okay, can you see over here what I have written? These are mathematical expressions where the relationship between two expressions is not one of equality but rather an inequality. Okay, <laughs> if I have x plus y is equal to nine, this is a equality. Okay, and when I say x plus y. Is less than nine, or x plus y is greater than nine, or I can say x plus y is less than or equal to nine, or x plus y is greater than equal to nine. All these are linear inequalities. Linear inequalities are used in various real life situations for decision making and constraint setting. Okay, so many times you may feel that you um. Get the question like why do I need to study this? But right? this is very important in decision making and constraint setting. What is constraint? Constraint means what is the limit that you put? <coughs> For example, time. How much hours do you have? Twenty four, right? You cannot exceed twenty four hours. Okay, I can't say that. Uh, okay, Rashmi, you work for twenty uh, six hours in a day. It's not possible, right? So, what is the constraint that time? Twenty four. कंस्ट्रेंट माने क्या होता है कि जो आपके अपर लिमिट होती है नीचे की लिमिट होती है कुछ भी जो एक लिमिट होती है उसको हम कंस्ट्रेंट बोलते हैं लाइक अगर हमारे दिन में 24 घंटे हैं तो मैं उससे ज्यादा काम नहीं कर सकती ना ज्यादा से ज्यादा मैं 24 घंटे कर सकती हूँ तो अगर आपने बोल दिया कि रश्मि आप छब्बीस घंटे काम करो एक दिन में तो वो पॉसिबल नहीं है क्योंकि हमारे पास चौबीस ही घंटे है ओके सो दैट इज कॉल्ड एज कंस्ट्रेंट Or this is very important in decision making, especially like you know you have uh, what are ex uh, what are examples we are taking. There are uh, very practical examples in costing. Okay, so wherein you are producing, manufacturing something. So what is the limit of the machine's time? Uh, how much time the machine can be worked? So uh, how much time uh, you can use the um, workers? Okay, uh, so because there are restrictions on how many hours the worker can work. How many hours the machine can work? Okay, because always you know in machines you have the breakdown. You have the time when you have to like you know uh, stop the machine and then um, then after only after that you can use it again. So all those things you can you know put it through linear inequalities. <laughs> the simplest one are with one variable and more than one variables are also possible. now for example where do i use the linear inequality so let me take a practical examples wherein you will be able to understand for example the first <coughs> simplest example is budgeting suppose i am earning 50000 a month okay meri tankha 50000 hai so how much can i spend maximum 50000 okay can i go beyond that And we are not talking about credit card, etc. If I am earning fifty thousand, the maximum I can spend is fifty thousand, right? But do we want that? No, we always want the income to be more than expenses, okay? So that you can have something uh, for savings, okay? So 
if my monthly income is 50000 you want to know how much your monthly expenses can be so i should be greater than or equal to e what is i i is the income what is e e is the expense <laughs> it is an inequality in which we can represent our budgeting okay this is the simplest thing well, then you can you know you can even have like i is equal to e plus s okay Earnings plus saving, and then I can say that uh, my saving should be at least greater than or equal to ten thousand per month. So in that case, what will my expense be? Expense should be less than or equal to forty thousand. Okay. So all those type of things, you know, you can put in. Like you can expand on this. This is the basic concept wherein I'm showing you how linear inequalities work. <laughs> so first is the budgeting. Second is temperature range. ना गर्मियों में एसी एसी में सब घर में झगड़े होते हैं ना कितने कितना temperature रखना है फ्रिज का भी रहता है कितना कितना हम temperature रख सकते हैं so that also is an example of linear equality inequality like in that suppose we say that the temperature has to maintain between 34 fahrenheit and 40 degree fahrenheit then we say that 34 is less than equal to 2 uh, t is less than equal to 40 this is the uh, temperature range within which we should keep our refrigerator setting <coughs> because this is the ideal way in which we get good uh, working of the refrigerator and balance of the cost of electricity also okay shiva aap hindi medium mein hai to bhi koi problem nahi sums aapko acche se samajh mein aa jayenge koi dikkat nahi jitne bhi aap hindi medium wale bacche hain aapko bilkul chinta karne ki zarurat nahi hai aapko jo kuch bhi adjan aaye agar kuch english word humne use kar diya jo aapko nahi samajh mein aaya aap bata dijiyega aap chat mein dal dijiyega ki ye shabd samjha nahi jaise abhi maine constraint aapko bataya to aapko bilkul chinta kare aap ye dimag se nikal dijiye एग्जाम ये कांसेप्ट के ऊपर है भाषा की एग्जाम नहीं दे रहे अगर हम इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज के एग्जाम दे रहे तो तो आपको चिंता करने की जरूरत थी लेकिन हम जो है यहां पे हम मैथमेटिक्स के बारे में हम गणित के बारे में पढ़ रहे हां तो आप ऐसा दिमाग में क्यों लाते हैं कि भाई ये मुझसे समझेगा नहीं मैम क्या बोल रही है या मैं क्या कोई भी फैकल्टी जो कुछ भी बोल रहा है कोई भी अध्यापक आपको बताएगा तो वो आपको प्रेम से ही बताएगा आपको बिल्कुल चिंता करने की जरूरत नहीं और आप पहले तो ये दिमाग से ही निकाल दीजिए कि आपको समझेगा नहीं आप ये सोचिए कि मुझे ये समझने वाला है तो ही होगा क्योंकि कांसेप्ट भी टफ है आप सीए कर रहे हैं तो आपका एग्जाम भी टफ है तो हमें ज्यादा कंसंट्रेशन क्या करना है हमें कांसेप्ट पे हमें विषय के ऊपर ध्यान देना है ना कि भाषा के ऊपर ठीक है तो आप बिल्कुल चिंता ना करें आपको जब भी दिक्कत आएगी आप चैट बॉक्स में डाल दीजिएगा हम उत्तर दे देंगे ठीक है अब्दुल्ला आप बोल रहे हैं कि आप अपने मैथ्स नहीं लिया था तो एक कोई बात नहीं ये जो मैथमेटिक्स है ना फाउंडेशन लेवल का वो इसलिए है कि आपको प्रिपेयर ही कर रहा है इसीलिए वो कांसेप्ट डाला है बहुत बार ऐसा होता है ना बच्चों ने 12th में मैथ मैथ्स लिया होता है लेकिन मतलब उन्होंने बस ले लिया होता है उन्होंने बस करने है अभी हम जो कांसेप्ट कर रहे हैं फाउंडेशन में उसमें क्या है आपका कांसेप्ट एकदम क्लियर हो जाना चाहिए इसीलिए आप ये लेक्चर अटेंड कर रहे हो यही सबसे बड़ी बात है ना आपने सोचा है कि मुझे इसमें अच्छे से मार्क्स लाने हैं तो अब तभी आप यहाँ पे आए हैं ठीक है तो आप बिल्कुल चिंता ना करें नॉन मैथ्स वाले बच्चों को थोड़ा सा ज्यादा एफर्ट लेना पड़ेगा जैसे हमने आज कर दिया तो आप वापस वीडियो दो बार देख लीजिए वापिस आपको हाथ से लिखना है बहुत बार बच्चे क्या कहते हैं हाथ से लिखते नहीं है तो उसमें दिक्कत आती है मैथ्स में आपको यू हैव टू राइट इट डाउन ओके सो लेट मी ट्रांसलेटेड अगेन इनटू इंग्लिश इन इन द सेंस दैट इफ यू आर फ्रॉम अ नॉन मैथ्स बैकग्राउंड जस्ट मेक श्योर दैट यू आर राइटिंग इट डाउन यू नो यू हैव अंडरस्टूड द कांसेप्ट दैट गो बैक री सी द वीडियो एंड देन यू नो राइट फर्स्ट प्रैक्टिस राइटिंग बिकॉज़ व्हाट हैपेंस इज इफ यू आर फ्रॉम नॉन मैथ्स ओके फॉर द वंस विद मैथ्स बैकग्राउंड मे बी इट्स इजीयर but for the non maths na you must be able to write x plus y less than or equal to you know those those uh, then you have greek alphabets also you know delta gamma so all those things you must practice writing so once you practice writing it becomes easier for you to write down okay 
சிவா அப்துல்லா Mania, if you are not able to get the app, what you do is just write to the institute and they will help you out. Shiva is asking where we are from, so I am from Hindustan. Okay, so I am from India. Yes, Shiva is asking where we are from. Okay, so I am from India. Yes, Monish, yes, thank you. Pavitra, no, this whole thing, 1, 2, 3 chapter carries 12 marks, okay, 20 to 30 percent of 40, these three are carrying 12 marks. Okay. So I think that all of you have understood, all your questions have been answered. So let us now get back to the chapter in hand that is linear inequality. Now what happens in linear inequality? See, suppose if I have simultaneous equation, then I can write one equation, I write the second equation, I use the concept and I solve it. Why people find difficulty in linear inequalities is because usually the sum, sum is in words, you know, concepts are given in words and then using those words you have to formulate the equation, okay. This is the best way in which to increase your analytic skills and to understanding skills, you know, how, I, how much I understand. <laughs> so, how to solve in linear inequalities, okay, so uh, this is there in the uh, study material also. So, development of inequalities from the descriptive problem. So, you will be given a descriptive problem and using that you have to develop the inequalities. Forms of linear inequalities in one variable and solution space with other conditions, okay. So, uh, what are the common um, conditions are is that less than uh, 0, greater than 0, less than or equal to 0, greater than or equal to 0. <laughs> so, those are the building blocks over which we form the uh, inequalities. Once we do that, once we have formed the equation, you graph, you find the graph. Okay, so this is my first step. Okay, so I read the sum. Sum, sum padre. And then I try to, try to form the equation. Okay. So, and then once my equation is there, like uh, if it is 5x plus 7y, okay, then I have to see whether the concept is calling from greater than or greater than equal to less than or less than or equal to, you know, uh, any of these four <laughs> will be there for it to be an inequality. So, this is my second step. So, this once I found this, then this is a very important part. The third step is from, uh, draw the graph, okay, and then then you form the common area, common region. Okay, so for this, you use use the concept of matrix also. Hmm? So this matrix actually can be formed here. Okay, so these two, the fourth and fifth will give rise to a matrix. And once I solve the matrix, <coughs> solve the matrix. And get the optimal solution. Okay, so optimal solution may be like if it is profit, I want to increase the profit, right? So, what will be the maximum profit I can get? Okay, if it is cost, what is the least cost that I can get? So, depend. Even when you get the solution, you have to go back to the question, see whether they have asked for profit, whether they have asked for a cost. Okay, so then only you will be able to do this. So, first is read the description, understand what is happening, okay, and the description is always in simple words, okay, don't worry. <laughs> so, don't worry about it, you have to just read the description. Aap sochiye ki ye aisa ho raha hai, kisi factory mein ho raha hai. Hmm? So, once you think on those terms, like if it is happening, only then you can think. Don't think of it as a mathematics, think of this that is happening, actually happening in your surrounding. Using that, form the linear inequalities, 
see the condition whether it is less than less than or equal to greater than greater than equal to sometimes it is zero sometimes it is five you know all those shapes then you have to for, uh, draw the graphs <coughs> then determine the common area in which the you will be able to get again there are bounded solution unbounded solution so that also we'll be doing later on find the feasible points and then use the optimal solution okay I hope everybody is understood till now. If you understood, just put it in the chat box that you have understood the concept so that we could go further. Anish, uh, illustration karvaoge ki. Haan, illustration abhi sab dekh rahe. Tabeshwari, what are you not able to see? Yes, Preeti, you could write it down. Uh, right now, it's just a concept. Once we solve it, no, you could do that. <laughs> yes, good. You have understood so many of you. Now, let us talk about the two types of uh, inequalities that we are going to deal with is one variable inequality. Any linear function that involves an inequality is a linear in inequality, any linear function. It may be of one variable or more than one variable. Okay, so it should be linear. The concept is that it should be linear. Otherwise, you may have quadratic in in inequality also. But we are just talking about linear. Linear means just x or y. Okay, uh, it's not x square, x cube. You know? We are not talking about those. We are just talking about x and y. <coughs> you may have in z also, but let us not complicate. Let us stick to what is there in our syllabus. So, x is greater than 0, x is less than or equal to 0, etc. The value of the variables that satisfy an in inequality are called as a solution space. Okay, all the values that sort satisfy is called a solution space and it is abbreviated as ss abbreviated mantra chote karke kya likhte ss the solution space for x greater than 0 let us see x greater than 0 yaha mera 0 hai now <coughs> x is greater than 0 mane kya hota hai ki wahan se nahi shuru hota hai thoda sa distance rakh ke like if this is my 0 my line, my uh, solution space will start from here onwards, okay? So, this is my 1, this is my 2. So, it is not going to, uh, like, touch the 0. Why? Because x is greater than 0. There will be a small um, number up from where you will start the solution space. x less than 0, mane kya? 0 ke niche. So, but here, as if you have x is less than or equal to 0, if x is less than, then you will start 0 from 0. You can see here, this is a small line from 0 from 0. Okay? <coughs> as you can see, x greater than 0, the line does not start from 0, but a little away from 0. When x is less than or equal to 0, when there is an equal to sign, it will start from that number. And in this case, it is going in this direction. Okay, now this is quite clearly shown in this two variables like you know x and y. Okay, now before we go any further, let me tell you this. <coughs> Most of you must be knowing it. This is my x, this is my y. Okay, so this is called as quadrant 1. This is called as quadrant 2. This is called as quadrant 3. And this is called as quadrant 4. Okay. When two lines intersect, they will form four parts. The four parts, like we say, quarter. Okay. So, <coughs> so first quadrant is this. Here what is happening? X is also greater than uh, 0. X is also greater than or equal to 0. Y is also greater than or equal to 0. Here what happens? Y is positive. This is my 0, 0. Okay. Here X is less than or equal to 0. Y is greater than or equal to 0. 
over here what happens is x is less than or equal to 0, y is also less than or equal to 0. Here what happens is x is greater than or equal to 0 and y is less than or equal to 0. <laughs> So, these are the four things that you must know. Now, what is happening over here is when I am saying x is greater than or equal to, greater than 0, there is not equal to. So, can you see this gap? This gap should be there. Okay. So, when they will give you four graphs and you have to identify which of them is x greater than 0. So, if they give you this and this graph, this is x is greater than or equal to 0. So, there it will touch the y-axis. But here it is not going to touch the y-axis. Axis. So, will not touch y axis. Aapka jo region hai, wo chipke ka nahi y axis pe, usse thoda sa dur rahega. So, this is x greater than 0. And why have we drawn here also? Because as you see, x is positive in q1 as well as q4. Okay, x is positive. in q1 and q4 <coughs> y is positive in q2 and q1 q1 and q2 okay so what is happening here x is greater than 0 first and third quadrant x is greater than or equal to 0 first and third quadrant but what is the difference there is his gap over here which is not over here now when i say y is uh, positive okay y is greater than 0 and y is greater than or equal to 0 these are x is greater than 0 If I add the condition y is also greater than 0, then I get this. Now, this is x <laughs> greater than or equal to 0 and I add the condition y is greater than or equal to 0, then I get this. Again, as you can see, this is a gap over here. The gap is not over here. This is, uh, it touches the y axis. Okay. So, these are the two ways in which you must understand that uh, we are talking about single variable and now we have talked about two variables, okay. So, x is going to be positive in first and fourth quadrant and y is going to be positive in first and second quadrant. Now, let us go to this sum. It is a solved example. <coughs> Yes, it is easy. Very good. Kinjal. Bhavyashri, step 4. This one? Okay. So, what happens is that, as you can see from here, in the second, this is x is greater than or equal to 0. Okay. So, this is the q1 and this is the q4. Now, what they are saying is y is also greater than or equal to 0. What happens in here, y is negative here. So, I have to like remove this portion. And so, what will I have is this portion only in q1. Okay. Bhavishri, I hope you have understood. Yes, good. Kinjal, those are already uploaded. Just go <coughs> see over there. And you can always watch the video, right? The PDF has been uploaded. <coughs> Yes, Tameshwari, some of you have already done the, <coughs> done the concept. Now, consider the in linear inequalities in two variables given by x plus y is less than 
six. Okay, so this is not less than or equal to six. It is less than. This this is very important that you understand. Here it is. Okay, you have to see whether it is less than or less than or equal to. So here it is less than. Okay. Now what are the steps we are going to follow? Okay, just. <coughs> First, understand the steps. The first step is that you are going to take the inequality and write it as an equality. So instead of this less than, greater than, equal to sign, we are going to just write it as this. So this first step is what? Write inequality as 3x plus y equal to 6. Okay, instead of this, I am going to write equal to. Now, what a second step will be what? I'm going to keep y on the left hand side and take all the others onto the right hand side. Okay, so here I will write y. I keep it on the left hand side and this 3x, I will take it over here. Where, <coughs> when any number crosses the equal to sign, it is going to change its sign. So this plus 3x will become minus 3x. So, 6 minus 3x, okay? Why? Because it is crossing the equal to sign. So, we may write 3x plus y as y on the left-hand side and all the others on the right-hand side. Seek the pair of numbers that satisfy x minus 6, y is equal to 6 minus 3x, okay? That is what we are going to do. And then draw the graph of this line. Check the condition whether less than or more than, okay? So, here, like here, we see that it is Less than. In this case, all the points for which coordinate is less than 6 minus 3x below the line AB. Okay. <coughs> Let, me <re> <coughs> Let me repeat. First step will be write the inequality as an, in as an equality. Then second step, keep y onto the left hand side, all the others to the right hand side. Then Put in the values, try to find the values, okay? So, we will <coughs> find the pairs of values <coughs> that satisfy this equality. Once you have done that, you are going to draw a graph. Once you have drawn the graph, you are going to see whether it is less than, greater than, equal to, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, and then uh, you are going to decide on the area that satisfies the given conditions, okay? So, let us try and do this. This is uh, what are the steps that we are supposed to be doing. Okay. <coughs> so, what we are going to do is we are going to draw a, a table that becomes easier so that we don't make a mistake. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to draw this table. Okay, now let me put x is equal to 0. Okay, let me put x is equal to 0. So, y is equal to 6 minus 3 into 0. Okay, so 3 into 0 is 0. So, y will be equal to 6. So, when x is 0, y is equal to 6. Now, second time I am going to put y is equal to 0. So, this is my first, second. If I put y is equal to 0, <coughs> It is equal to 0, 6 minus 3x. So, 3x is equal to 6 or x is equal to 6 upon 3 which is equal to 2. So, when y is 0, x is 2. Okay. So, you have got these two. And then if you need, you will draw something else. But there is absolutely no need right now. What we are going to do is we are going to draw the graph. On the, this is my x-axis, this is my y-axis, 
this is my point zero zero this is one two three four five six one two three four five and six okay okay So this is my point zero and zero. Okay. <laughs> what is the first point? When x is zero, y is six. As you know, on the y-axis, as you know, on the y on the y-axis, x is always equal to zero. On the x-axis, y is always equal to zero. This is a concept that you must know. So when x is zero, y is six. Okay, so this is my first point. Then when y is zero, x is two. So this is one, two. So this is my second point. So we are going to draw this line. Okay, we are going to draw this line like this. Okay, and once you have drawn the line, make it a habit of writing it down. Okay. So, what is the line? <coughs> what is line given? 3x plus y is less than 6. So, I will write it over here. 3x plus y is less than, not equal to less than 6. Less than six okay now what it means is that all my data all my numbers which are lying below this are going to be satisfied now also see whenever you are looking uh, to draw uh, the area under the uh, equation you have to see whether any conditions for x and y have been given whether it is written x is greater than zero whether it is written x is greater than say five you know those type of things but in this equation this is the simplest form of equation so nothing no information other than uh, the equation is given so what it means is that what will be my <coughs> will be this this is my feasibility area. So for this equation, all these is going to uh, comply with the condition y three x plus y is less than six. Okay. So because why we have drawn lines here and not lines above because this is important. Okay. This less than uh, so that is why it is below. Okay. So what are we doing? Let me repeat. What we are going to do? Take the inequality, write it as an inequality. As an in, uh, take the inequality, write it as an equality. Second, keep y on the left hand side. Write all the others. <coughs> take all the other numbers, <coughs> alphabets onto the right hand side. Then. Try to find the points, okay? So, for once we put x is equal to 0, find the value of y. Next, we put y is equal to five, uh, 0, find the value of x. Then, we plot the graph, okay? Once we have plotted the graph, we will see the condition less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, okay? All those things uh, we are going to do and then we are going to draw, okay? So, here I have written, ordinate is less than 6 minus 3x, lie below the line this. So this is the summary. I will write 0, 6, 2, 0 and then I am going to do this, draw the line and then I am going to draw below y because uh, my equation says so. No, Amal, you need not be sorry for anything. It is good that you know what your strong points are, what are weak points are. It is better that you 
like you already know that you you are good at statistics or uh, mental ability some so logical reasoning so then what you do you concentrate on maths earlier on it joy where is it not uh, x is greater than 0 where is it it is beyond like what they are saying is it will go on they are just trying to show you okay here joy they are just trying to show it it is going to extend okay it is going to extend beyond Sanya, yes, I will repeat. Nikita, what are you saying? <coughs> Nikita, आप कुछ भी ले सकते हो वन टू थ्री फोर जब आपको ये लाइन बनानी है ना तो आप कुछ भी ले सकते हो लेकिन सबसे आसान क्या होता है एक्स इज इक्वल टू जीरो वाई इज इक्वल टू जीरो लेने से क्या होता है आपको आपकी लाइन जो है वो एक्स एक्सिस और वाई एक्सिस पे कहा कट होने वाली है वो आपको समझ में आता है तो आपको लाइन ड्रॉ करने में आसानी होती है आप इसमें और भी कर सकते हो जैसे अगर मैंने यहाँ पे ले लिया एक्स इज इक्वल टू थ्री तो वाई विल बी इक्वल टू सिक्स माइनस थ्री इंटू थ्री तो दिस इज सिक्स माइनस नाइन विच इज इक्वल टू माइनस थ्री सो वाई इज इक्वल टू माइनस थ्री तो अगर मैं यहाँ पे एक्स इज इक्वल टू थ्री लू तो ये वन टू थ्री माइनस वन माइनस टू माइनस थ्री तो आपका जो पॉइंट है वो यहाँ पे आएगा हा? आप कोई सा भी पॉइंट ले सकते हो इजिया इसके लिए है क्योंकि हम हमें फाउंडेशन में क्या करना है हमें कॉन्सेप्ट समझने हैं ज्यादा आपको ज्यादा ऐसा जो हम लोग के ट्वेल्थ में एग्जाम में रहता है टेंथ में आप ग्राफ पेपर ले रहे हो ड्रॉ कर रहे हो उससे भी ज्यादा बिकॉज इट्स एन एमसीक्यू एग्जाम सो व्हाट इज एक्सपेक्टेड ऑफ यू इज टू अंडरस्टैंड द कॉन्सेप्ट दैट दिस डायग्राम शुड कम इनटू योर माइंड दिस ग्राफ शुड कम इन योर माइंड अमल वी आर राइटिंग दिस फॉर द एक्सप्लेनेशन ओके इन द एग्जाम दे विल लाइक इफ यू सी द एक्सरसाइज ऑल्सो देव ऑलरेडी गिवन यू द ग्राफ्स okay and you have to choose the graph so but how will you know which graph it is until unless you've drawn it once you practice drawing then just looking at this you know you you will be able to make out whether the points are satisfying the equation whether the graph is correct which of the four graphs that the options are given which of them is correct so you need to be able to uh, clearly articulate which is the correct one for that we are doing this okay these lectures i'm there to make your concepts clear you become very strong with your concept and then you will be moving on and doing the mcqs okay anil break 3 baje hota hai abhi se mat mangiye x is equal to 0 explain kar dijiye okay do kahan se aaya ये दो हम कुछ ये वाला जो दो है ना वो यहां से आया वाई इज इक्वल टू जीरो डाला इक्वेशन में सो so, मेरा इक्वेशन क्या है मैं एक बार वापस दिखा देती हूँ वाई इज इक्वल टू सिक्स माइनस थ्री एक्स नाउ वॉट आई डू आई पुट वाई इज इक्वल टू जीरो सो पुट वाई इज इक्वल टू जीरो सो वॉट विल एपन जीरो इज इक्वल टू सिक्स माइनस थ्री एक्स ओके I'll take the minus three x to this side. I will get three x is equal to six. So x will be equal to six upon three, which is equal to two. Okay, ये वाला जो two है ना वो यहाँ से आया. ठीक है समझ में आ गया? हमारा का first step क्या है? Put okay यहाँ I'll just write it over here. <coughs> Put x is equal to zero. Solve. Get value of y. ओके फर्स्ट स्टेप सेकेंड पुट वाई इज इक्वल टू जीरो सॉल्व गेट वैल्यू ऑफ एक्स ठीक है नुसरत आपको समझ में आया नाउ दैट इज वाई I'll just repeat for uh, Sanika and the others. 
ये सानिया और मैथमेटिक्स एंड स्टैटिस्टिक्स दो होल दो होल पेपर इज ऑब्जेक्टिव ओके सो यू टू जस्ट अंडरस्टैंड द कॉन्सेप्ट एंड देन वील बी डूइंग सो आई जस्ट रिपीट बिकॉज दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वंस यू नो दिस कॉन्सेप्ट यू कैन सॉल्व द सम्स वेरी इजीली टेक द इनइक्वालिटी दैट इज गिवन टू यू राइट इट एज एन इक्वालिटी सॉल्व इट पुट एक्स इज इक्वल टू जीरो पुट वाई इज इक्वल टू जीरो गेट द वैल्यूज देन ड्रॉ द ग्राफ and then see what is the condition whether it is greater than or less than and depending on that you are going to choose the area within which <laughs> which is your feasible solution okay okay so this is the line so this is the simple line of this is the line of y is equal to 6 minus 3x okay this is simple and what is this 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 is giving you y is less than or equal less than 6 minus 3x okay so this this concept you can get from here <laughs> if you've understood this let us go to the second inequality same thing we are going to do so if you've understood that you will be able to understand x minus y is less than or equal to minus 2 what is the first step first step is write it as an equal equality second step is find the values okay so put x is equal to 0 find the value of y put y is equal to 0 find the value of x third step plot the graph okay that will be the fourth step now draw the graph fifth step is check the condition whether it is less than greater than okay that you have to see and six is then you have to actually color whichever like uh, area is satisfying the given condition okay and mostly in mcqs the uh, region will be marked over there you have to identify which of them is the correct option okay <coughs> so x minus y is less than or equal to minus 2 x minus y is less than or equal to minus 2 so first is x minus y is equal to minus 2 that is my first step then this is my first step second step is put y on left hand side and all the others on the right hand side so minus y is equal to minus 2 minus x so i will uh, because i don't want minus y so i multiply by Minus one on both sides. So what do I get? Y is equal to two plus x. Okay. Now a third thing I have to find the points. Find points satisfying. That satisfy. Now I will first x and y. So for first point I'll put x is equal to zero. For the second point I'll put uh, y is equal to zero. Now let me find out. Now I have x minus y is equal to minus two. So put x is equal to zero. So what will I have? Okay, I'm using this. Let me put it over here. If you are comfortable with minus sign, you can do that also. So I have y is equal to two plus x. So x is equal to zero. So y will be equal to two plus zero. So y is equal to two. Okay. So when x is zero, y is two. Now, now put. y is equal to zero, so y is equal to two plus x, so zero is equal to two plus x. <coughs> so x, I take the two to this side, so it becomes x is equal to minus two. Okay, so when y is zero, x is minus two. So now I draw the graph. I have this is my zero zero. This is my minus one. This is my minus two. So this is my one. This is my two. This is my one. This is my two. 
uh, you have to. So this is my first point because the first point is 0, 2 on the y-axis. This is my y-axis. X is always 0. So this is 0, 2. And on the x-axis, y is 0. So this is 0, minus 2. So minus 2, 0. Okay, so what are the points we are plotting? <laughs> 0, 2 and minus 2, 0. So this is the, uh, 0, 2 and this is minus 2, 0. So when I draw the line, what will I get? So, this is y is equal to 2 plus x. Okay, this is my line. Now, what happens here is, what is the condition? x minus y is less than or equal to 2. Here, what is happening? Minus y is less than or equal to. So, there is, this is minus y. So, when I make it plus, so y, it will be greater than or equal to. Okay. So, because I am changing the sign of y. From minus to plus, what will ha happen, which is less than, will become greater than. So, this, what is the area? Th this is the area that satisfies. The line ki niche nahi aayega, huh? Okay. So, this, 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 and this. <laughs> so now what do I have is once I have drawn everything I am uh, when I found out all the values I can draw the graph I have to just make sure what is the sign with my y and accordingly it will be less than or more than okay so the graph will be in which direction okay so here this is the direction in which it is satisfied okay so I hope this concept is clear. First equation, second equation. Both the equations are there. Joy, the, <coughs> the lines are, uh, rays are on the left hand side. Why? Because it is this, this concept. Minus y was less than. So y will be greater than. Okay. So this, this direction is greater, right? So, that is why the direction is, because see, here what is the value of y? This is going to increase over here, increase in y. So, that is why we are taking here. Yes, Akanksha, done. Thank you, Divya, thank you. Yes, Tejasvi. Right arrow or left arrow? Tambeshwari, okay. Rani said, this is what I'm saying. Now you have to see, see this. This is going to help you decide which, which is the area <coughs> which is satisfied. Yes, Nikita, in the last question, what happened? Let me show it to you. Last happen, uh, equation, what was happening? Y is less than, here it is, Y is less than 6 minus 3x. Right? 3x plus y is less than 6. Here, here can you see the y is already positive. So, this is y is less than is the condition. But what is happening over here? In the second equation, it is y is greater than. Minus y is less than. Okay, so minus y is less than mean y is greater than. Because if I multiply... You remember that if I multiply by minus 1, the sign changes from greater than to less than or less than to greater than. Okay. Yes, Arjadeep done, Tanya done, Priyanka, yes, Renuka also, Anuj. Okay, Nikita, Rani, Tambeshwari, I hope you've understood. Tambeshwari, it is 2 plus x is y, equal to y, okay? This is same. This, I am writing this and x plus 2 is equal to y are one and the same thing, right? We are writing y on the left hand side or on the right hand side. 
okay it is one and the same thing but for as a general practice we are writing y on the left hand side because <laughs> it is the unknown variable and we put in values of x and try to find the value of y okay now here we have this now we are going to see what we are doing now by superimposing the about to graph we determine the common area so one restriction one condition is y is less than uh, like 3x plus 6 is less than y okay that one was one and the second is x plus 2 is equal to y so once i try to superimpose them so here the lines are going down here the lines are going up okay so when i superimpose so what will happen so if i see this so which of <coughs> this already is over here okay so this is my this was my y is equal to 2 plus x so all the lines we will remember were showing like this but they have to satisfy both the equation all the points have to satisfy both the equation so once i have this are they satisfying the equation y is equal to 6 minus 3x no because this is the line and all the points will lie below them so this is not going to work so i will not be using these points okay i will not be using these points what i am going to do is i am going to use the points which are going to satisfy both the lines so this is one line okay and this is the other line okay so something is below this line and something is above this line so this is my region Okay, this is my feasible region. Okay, <laughs> why I don't take these? We don't take because they do not satisfy. The equation. y is equal to 6 minus 3x okay so that is why we have taken this okay so i have just write, written that again so this is what y is equal to 6 minus 3x this is y is equal to 2 plus x and then superimposing we get this okay so i hope the concepts are clear now Yes, no doubts. Kinjal, Nikita, Preeti has also understood. Sanya, Ashdeep. Ambeshwari, where is the multiple minus y x y? I have not written x y anywhere. We don't have those complicated things. Okay, we just have either x or y. Okay, Surya, you like my teaching? Thank you so much. Yes. Okay, somebody wanted a break, so let us take a break and then come back in five to ten minutes. Okay, break level.
welcome back all of you now we have shown how this is the area under which is the feasible area now let us go to the first example this is uh, was um, a practice sum now let us see we now consider the problem of drawing graph of the following inequalities x is greater than or equal to 0 y is greater than or equal to 0 x is less than or equal to 6 y is less than or equal to 7 and x plus y is less than or equal to 12 okay <coughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There are 5 graphs, 5 conditions and using those conditions we have to draw the graph. Okay. So, let us take it one by one. Okay. Now, let us consider the conditions x is greater than or equal to 0, x is less than or equal to 6. This is my x-axis. This is my y-axis. <laughs> this is my 0, 0. Okay, this is my 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. So, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. And this is 1, 2, 3, 4. Let me put this also 2, 4, 6, 8. This is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 and 12. Okay. Now, x is greater than or equal to 0. So, remember this. Okay. You, do you remember this one? So, here it is when it is greater than 0 only, there is a gap. But when it is x is greater than or equal to 0, you will have what? You will also have. Uh, it touching the line. Okay. We did this. We did this. And now we are doing this. Okay. <coughs> so now what we are going to do is. This is the condition 1. But there is also another condition for x. That x cannot exceed 6. What does this mean? That x cannot exceed 6. Okay. So, where is my 6? My 6 is here. And all x is greater than 0. So, all these conditions, but there is this condition. Okay. So, what I will do is, I will draw that condition. This is not a straight line. <laughs> So, let me put a straight line. Okay. So, what is going to happen? All these things, all these are satisfying. X is greater than 0 and X is less than 6. So, this is satisfying these two conditions. Now, let us see the condition on Y y is greater than or equal to 0 and y is less than or equal to 7. So, here again, y cannot exceed 7. So, again, I draw. This is my 0, 0. This is my 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. So, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. And this is also 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 and 12. <laughs> now they are saying y cannot exceed 7. So where is my 7? It is going to lie between 6 and 8. So this is my 7. Okay. So this is my 0, 7 point. So what is going to happen? I am going to have a line which is parallel to the x-axis. Okay. So these are the this is the feasible area which is satisfying this condition. Y is greater than 0 and Y is less than 7. And what was this? This is the area when X is greater than 0 but X is less than or equal to 6. Hmm? X is greater than or equal to 0. X is less than or equal to 6. So, these two conditions I have done. Now, what is the third condition? 
this is where we use the uh, earlier thing that we do that is first we'll write the inequality as an inequality as an equality second step we'll put y on the uh, uh, on the left hand side and all others on the right hand side third step is we'll put values for x and y and find the values for x and y okay i put the value for x find the value of y i put the value of y find it for x okay once i have done that what do i do i am going to use what i am going to draw the graph using these points i am going to draw the graph and once i have drawn this graph what am i going to do i am going to take the first graph that is x is greater than 0 and x is less than or equals to 6 then i'm going to take the second graph y is greater than or equal to 0 y is less than or equal to 7 and these two i'm going to superimpose on the third graph that i'm going to draw just now and then from there i can find the feasible area <coughs> so now let us do this y is equal to so what is the equation given to us x plus y is less than 12 So, I had the equation x plus y is less than or equal to 12. So, what I have done, I have written x plus y is equal to 12. So, keeping y on the left hand side, keeping all others here and taking y, x over here, it becomes minus. So, 12 minus x. What is the next step I do? x and y. Put x is equal to 0, find the value of y. So, let x be equal to 0, then 0 plus y is equal to 12. So, y is equal to 12. So, what do I get? I get value of y to be equal to 12. Next, what do I do? Next, I put y is equal to 0. Next, second, let y be equal to 0. So, 0 is equal to 12 minus x or x is equal to Okay. <coughs> so when y is 0, x is also 12. So I've got this. Now I'm going to draw the line. <coughs> 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. This is my x axis. This is my y-axis, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, okay. So, when x is 0, y is 12, so this is one point, when y is 0, x is, uh, when x is 0, y is 12, this is the point, and when y is 0, x is 12, this is the point. Now, let me draw the line. Okay, now what is the condition? <coughs> x plus y is always less than or equal to 12. So, this is the direction. This is the direction. And always I will write x plus y equal to 12. So, all my points are going to lie here. Okay. Now, what I mean by superimposing the above three graphs, okay? So, this this one was what? <coughs> x is greater than or equal to 0. X is less than or equal to 6. What is this giving me? Y is greater than or equal to 0. Y is less than or equal to 7. And what is this? This is X plus Y is less than or equal to 12, okay? All this combination. Now, let us see. These are cutting each other here, okay? So, I must find these values. So, what happens? This and this, I will see. So, what is uh, the uh, value of x here? 6. So, I have x plus y is equal to 12 or y is equal to 12 minus x. So, put x is equal to 6. When I put x is equal to 6, I will get y is equal to 12 minus 6, which is equal to 6. So, what is the pair of points? 6, 6. Okay. So, this is the pair of points 6, 6. Second, here what is happening? Y is how much? 7. So, this is my first and second. 
put y is equal to 7. Okay, here. So, 7 is equal to 12 minus x. Okay, so y is equal to 12 minus x. So, 7 is equal to 12 minus x. I take the x to this side. I take the y, uh, 7 to this side. So, I get x is equal to 12 minus 7 which is equal to 5. So, what is the point? 5 and 7. So, this is this point. Okay. <coughs> so, now I have got what is known as a bounded region. It is bounded by what? X is equal, x and y 0, 0. Okay. Because we know that both x and y are greater than 0. Okay. They are positive numbers. Then I have the second condition. X is less than or equal to 6. So, this is the condition. Y is less than or equal to 7. This is the condition. And X plus Y is less than 12. This is the condition. So, when I do that, what are the points I get? This is the first point 0, 0. Then 0, 7. Then 5, 7. Then 6, 6. And then 6, 0. Why I am not taking this point? Why? Why? Because it is not satisfying this condition. X is less than 6. Okay. So, I can't take that even though it is there on this line and even though it is satisfied y less than or equal to 7. But because it is not satisfying x less than or equal to 6, I will not take it. So, which are the points I am taking? <coughs> this is 0, 0, then 0, 7, then 5, 7, and then 6, 6, and then 6, 0. Okay, these are the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 points are the points when, when we use them, I am able to define the area which satisfy all the 3 conditions. So, this brings us to the concept of what is feasible area, what is solution set, what do you mean by bounded? See, the common region is known as feasible area. This region, okay. This is 0, 0. Okay, 0, 0. Then this is 0, 7. This, this point here is 5, 7. This point here is 6, 6. And this point here is 6, 0. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, this common region, okay, this common, where, where you see the squares is known as the feasible region or the solution set. That means if I'm suppose manufacturing or doing something, so in this area you will get something that is maxima or minima. If it is cost, then you will get a minima. A region is said to be bounded if it can be totally included in within a very large circle. Can I draw a circle over here? Let me check. Okay, I can. Okay, I can draw a circle. It doesn't look like a circle, but it is a circle. Okay. Let me try to draw it again. If not, at least you understand the concept that this is feasible region, if I am able to draw, it looks more like an apple than a circle. Right? <laughs> When a region is said to be bounded, if it can totally be included within a very large circle, that is possible. The shaded region enclosed by the deep lines in the previous example is bounded. Okay, so we are able to bound it since it can be included in a circle. Okay, so we say this is a bounded, uh, it is called as bounded. What do you mean by feasible area? Common area is known as feasible area or solution set or polygonal convex set. See, many times it happens, you know, you say, Ari, I don't know where this theory question came. It was not there. But everything is there, you know. It's just read properly. So, or the polygonal convex set. <coughs> and then, you are, uh, this also brings us to the concept of extreme points. What are the concepts we have talked about? Feasible area, bounded and solution set. Now we are talking about extreme points. These points are known as extreme points. What is this extreme points? That the point of intersection of lines bounding the region. What are extreme points? These are the points which are the points of intersection of the lines. Okay. These uh, We use these points put them into a matrix and then we solve it to find the optimal solution. Okay. So, what are the extreme points? These are the points of intersection of lines bounding the region. <coughs> okay. 
these points are denoted by E. Okay. Matrix E. Okay. Concept. What is the concept of optimal solution? The largest and the smallest elements in the matrix E into C. Okay are respectively the maxima and the minima values of the objective function. So one objective function is given. So what is the objective function? Usually it is maximize profit, minimize loss, or minimize cost. Okay, those those type of things are there. <laughs> the row in the matrix EC in which this happens is noted and the element in that row Indicates the appropriate pairing and is known as the optimal solution. Okay. Just understand what the concept is. All you have to do is do the calculations. Once you see the values, you will know. If it is profit, you will choose the highest value. If it is cost, you will choose the lowest value. Okay. The next concept is that a coefficient of the objective functions may be represented. So let us see. Let me take it over here itself. Okay. So what I'm going to write, E, I'm going to write it as, I'll just write all the points. What is the first point? 0, 0. What is the second point? 0, 7. Then 5, 7. Then 6, 6. And then 6, 0. Okay, this is 6 and 0. It doesn't look. Now, what is the, <coughs> okay, this is the, um, the matrix E, which is the matrix for all the extreme points. Okay, so if your objective function is given as x plus 2y, so in this case, let us do this. So, if this is the case, now let me show you how to solve this. Okay, if you remember your matrices, multiplication of matrices. Okay, we have all, I think sir has already done it. But in, if you don't remember, <coughs> just, con, just get through. Just look through everything and then you will find out. Okay, so what will happen is 0, this 0 into this 1, 0 into 1 plus this 0 into 2. This is 0 into 2. Then you have 0 into 1, 0 into 1, <coughs> 7 into 2, plus 7 into 2. 5 into 1, plus 7 into 2. Then 6 into 1, plus 0 into 2. Then 6 into 0, 6 into 1, plus 6 into So 0 into 0 plus 0 into 0, you get a 0. 0 into 0 plus 7 into 2, you get, this is not 8, this is 0. So this is 0. This is 7 into 2, which is 14. Okay, 5 into 1 is 5, 7 into 2 is 14, 14 plus 2 is, 14 plus 5 is 19. Now, 6 into 1 is 6, 0 into 2 is 0, so this is 6. 6 into 1 is 6, 6 into 12 is uh, 12, 6 into 2 is 12, 12 plus 6 is 18, okay? What is the maxima you have? 19, okay? This is the, and this corresponds to which numbers? 5 and 7, this corresponds to 5 and 7, okay? So that x, the value of x is 5 and the value of y is 7. And where do you see that? On the graph, this point. Okay, this is the point which is going to give you a maximum. <laughs> Mustak, yes, I'm a little not well. हाँ हिमांशु हम हिंदी पे बोलेंगे कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं पुस्ता की है इस नस्रत मतलब फर्स्ट में एक्स की वैल्यू और सेकंड वाई की वैल्यू हमेशा ले 
हाँ आप ऐसा भी कर सकते हो वाई की भी पैरेलल ले सकते हो ऐसी कोई बात नहीं है लेकिन अभी क्या हो जाता है कि सब बुक्स में आपको पहले एक्स इज इक्वल टू जीरो डाल के वाई की वैल्यू निकालते हैं इसीलिए वो बेटर है आप वही सिस्टम फॉलो करो ऐसा कहीं रूल नहीं है आप पहले वाई इज इक्वल टू जीरो भी डाल सकते हो कोई दिक्कत नहीं है लेकिन अच्छा होगा आप एक्स इज इक्वल टू जीरो डालो तो आपको किसी भी बुक में कोई दिक्कत नहीं आएगी हिमांशु हिंदी में भी समझा रहे हैं फिजिबल मतलब क्या होता है तम्बेश्वरी कि जहां पे हमारे सारे कंडीशन सेटिस्फाई होते हैं अभी जो हमारा ये जो कॉन्सेप्ट ये जो जो आपको स्क्वायर वाला दिख रहा है ना जाली वाला पोर्शन दिख रहा है वो वहां पे आपको आपके सारे जो कंडीशन है वो सेटिस्फाई होते हैं यानी एक्स सिक्स से नीचे भी है वाई सेवन से नीचे भी है एक्स ग्रेटर देन जीरो भी है एक्स वाई जीरो से ज्यादा भी है <coughs> और जो कंडीशन है एक्सप्रेस वाइज लेस देन ट्वेल्व वो भी दी हुई है तो सब वहां पे सेटिस्फाई होती है वो जो जाली वाला पोर्शन है ना वहां पे उसको फीसिबल मिलते हैं लेकिन उसमें उस फीसिबल में आपको ऐसा नंबर ढूंढना है ऐसा ऐसा पॉइंट पेयर ऑफ पॉइंट ढूंढना है मतलब एक्स और वाई का ऐसी वैल्यू ढूंढनी है जो आपको ऑप्टिमाइज कर सके मतलब जो आपको मैक्सिमम प्रॉफिट दे सके या कम कम से कम कॉस्टिंग दे सके अभी ये सपोज हम लोग प्रॉफिट वाला बोल रहे हैं तो उसमें क्या हो रहा है फाइव और सेवन जो है ना एक्स फाइव और वाई सेवन यहाँ पे आपको सबसे ज्यादा नाइनटीन जो है आपको प्रॉफिट मिल रहा है मतलब अगर सपोज मैन्युफैक्चरिंग है और पांच रुपए पांच यूनिट आपने एक्स के बनाए और सात यूनिट वाई के बनाए तो आपको कितना मिलेगा उन्नीस रुपए प्रॉफिट मिलेगा ओके तो इसको जो है सी जो है ना धीरज वो आपका जो ऑब्जेक्टिव फंक्शन दिया रहेगा उसको लिखना है ओके अभी जो नेक्स्ट वाला सेम है ना उसमें आपको और क्लियर हो जाएगा ठीक है मुश्ताक आपको भी समझ में आ जाएगा जैसे हम लोग जैसे जैसे करते हैं ना वैसे उसको आपको मिल जाएगा ये आपकी बुक में भी दिया हुआ है लेकिन समझना क्या है आपको पहले ये जो है जीरो इंटू वन माने ये जीरो और ये वन नेक्स्ट क्या है जीरो इंटू टू मतलब ये जीरो और ये टू और बीच में क्या है प्लस साइन है कभी कभी बच्चे ना वहां पे मल्टीप्लीकेशन डाल देते हैं ऐसा नहीं है जीरो इंटू वन प्लस जीरो इंटू टू है मतलब उस तरह से हम अभी जो गिवन ऑब्जेक्टिव फंक्शन है ये इन्होंने ना क्या हो गया बाद में लिखा है इसलिए आपको थोड़ा कंफ्यूजन हो सकता है जेड इज इक्वल टू एक्स प्लस टू वाई इज मैक्सिम एट द पॉइंट फाइव एंड सेवन प्रेजेंट ओके यहाँ पे सबसे ज्यादा मुझको कहा मिल रहा है प्रॉफिट यहाँ पे मिल रहा है उन्नीस ओके सो वॉट आई डू इज आई ट्राई टू फाइंड आउट वेर दिस नाइनटीन कम्स फ्रॉम फॉर वेन डू आई गेट आई एम गेटिंग इट फॉर दिस ये एकदम वो है मतलब आप देख सकते हैं ना अगर आपका जीरो जीरो है एक्स जीरो वाई जीरो आपका प्रॉफिट भी जीरो है आपने कुछ बनाया ही नहीं आपने मैन्युफैक्चर ही नहीं किया आपने कुछ सेल ही नहीं किया तो आपका प्रॉफिट आएगा क्या नहीं आएगा तो वो जीरो आएगा फिर आपने एक्स नहीं बनाया वाई सात बनाए तो आपका प्रॉफिट कितना आया फोर्टीन आपने एक्स पांच बनाए वाई सात बनाए तो आपको उन्नीस आए एक्स छ बनाए वाई जीरो बनाए तो आपको छ प्रॉफिट आएगा और एक्स भी छ बनाए वाई भी छ बनाए तो आपको एटीन आएगा माने क्या ये सब से आपको अंदाजा आ जाता है कि आपको जो आपका प्रॉफिट है वो मैक्सिमाइज करने के लिए कौन से पॉइंट मतलब कितना एक्स मैन्युफैक्चर करना है कितना वाई मैन्युफैक्चर करना है या आप ट्रेडर होंगे आपकी दुकान होगी तो आपको ये पता लग जाएगा कि आपको एक्स कितना बेचना है और वाई कितना बेचना है ओके सो दिस कॉन्सेप्ट आर बेसिकली अबाउट दो थिंग्स दैट यू टू जस्ट सी दिपेक यस मैक्सिम पॉइंट ऑफ वर्ड मैक्सिम इज वेर यू आर गेटिंग मैक्सिम प्रॉफिट राइट सो इन दिस केस जीरो फोर्टीन नाइनटीन सिक्स एंड एटीन वॉट इज मैक्सिम नाइनटीन सो दैट इज द मैक्सिम प्रॉफिट आई कैन गेट वेन कैन आई गेट दैट प्रॉफिट I can get the profit when I am selling five units of X and seven units of Y. Okay? Yes, Divya. Divya, up to when may I get? दिस वन एंड टू दिस इज फ्रॉम दिस जेड इज इक्वल टू एक्स प्लस टू वाई सो एक्स यू हैव द कॉन्फिशेंट एज वन वाई यू हैव द कॉन्फिशेंट एज टू सो वन एंड टू ओके सो नाव यू 
solved the sums now we have to see how we are going to do it graphically <laughs> it's already given in the book i'm just um, revising it for you step 1 determine the regions that satisfy the set of given inequalities like we did this we took x is less than uh, greater than 0 x is greater than or equal to 6 y is greater than or equal to 0 y is greater than or equal to uh, less than or equal to 7 and so ensure that the region is bounded okay only when it is bounded can you find a proper solution if the region is not bounded either there are additional hidden conditions which can be used to bound the region or there is no solution okay so either there are some uh, some condition that you you did not look into or there is no solution to this then find the mat uh, construct the matrix e of the extreme points and the column vector c of the objective function objective function is always given to you using that you find the <coughs> column vector c what what do you mean by column vector okay jisme ek hi column hota hai baki sare rows hote hai jaisa bhi ye 1 aur 2 hai na ye column vector hai और अगर मेरा ऐसा है तो ये रो वेक्टर है जहां पे दो कॉलम है और एक रो है ओके ये एक कॉलम है तो इसको एक कॉलम है तो इसको कॉलम वेक्टर बोलते हैं इसको रो वेक्टर बोलते सो फाइंड द मैट्रिक्स प्रोडक्ट ई इंटू सी फॉर मैक्सिमाइजेशन डिटर्मिन द रोज इन ई सी वेर द लार्जेस्ट एलिमेंट अपियर्स वेर द मैक्स वाइल द मैक्सिमाइजेशन डिटर्मिन द रो मिनिमाइजेशन डिटर्मिन द रो वेर द स्मॉलेस्ट एलिमेंट अपियर एकदम लॉजिकल है इफ आई वॉन्ट समथिंग टू बी मैक्सिम आई विल फाइंड द मैक्सिम वैल्यू मैक्सिम इफ आई वॉन्ट टू फाइंड द मिनिम आई विल फाइंड द मिनिम वैल्यू ओके क्लियर इफ द स्लोप ऑफ द ऑब्जेक्टिव फंक्शन बी सेम एज वन साइड ऑफ द फिजिबल रीजन देर आर मल्टीपल सोल्यूशन टू द प्रॉब्लम सो यू कैन गेट दिस फॉर अ theory question okay so you can mark it in your uh, study material also if the slope of the objective function be the same as that of the one side of the feasible region there are multiple solutions to it however the optimized value of the objective remains the same then <coughs> this is also from the book here just remember make uh, for decision making purposes sometimes it is required to know whether the optimal point leaves some resources unutilized okay abhi aapke liye nahi hai bas aapko ye theory question ke liye ho sakta hai where you uh, suppose you will come to know that okay once i am using these two machines suppose i am manufacturing using two machines then uh, my optimized value is giving me a uh, value of x that i can manufacture and value of y that i can manufacture to give me maximum profit but this may result in my machines not being used to the full extent then in that case what can i can do is i can you know i can sell the machines time to somebody else okay i can say suppose i have the machine and you don't have the machine so you can approach me and say kisi can you let me use your machine for uh, say 10 hours if it is possible i'll say okay 10 hours a month you can use my machine and then you can give me rent okay so this is also a very good way in which not only you are using your machines for making profit for uh, that that is your main business but you can also earn additional income so once you do that you also come to know what are the resources that you are not utilize maybe it's machine maybe it's material okay so once you go in inter and final where you are using costing there you will see what is the leftover material what is the leftover machine times which how can i use it so you can use it by renting it out okay so those are the concept that and this is more for the theory question okay so let us use this question now and uh, so in this question you know you will be able to see everything in this question you can mark it as a comprehensive question if you are able to solve this you okay, can do दिव्या थैंक यू ओके कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं तांबेश्वरी तांबेश्वरी आई होप यू अंडरस्टूड या नाउ अ मैन्युफैक्चरर प्रोड्यूसेस टू प्रोडक्ट्स ए एंड बी एंड हैज हिज मशीन्स इन ऑपरेशंस 
24 hours a day. Okay, the production of A requires 2 hours of processing in machine M1 and 6 hours in machine M2. Okay, so what I will do is this is A, this is B, this is M1 and this is M2. Okay, conditions. <coughs> Production of B requires 6 hours of processing in machine 1, M1 and 6 hours and 2 hours in machine M2. The manufacturer earns a profit of 5 rupees of each unit of A and 2 units, rupees 2 on each unit of B. Okay, so my Z is equal to 5 of X plus 2 of Y. Okay, let X be the number of units of A being manufactured let Y be the number of units of B being manufactured. So Z <laughs> this is my profit what is the profit I can get is 5x plus 2y. Okay, I, if I sell one unit of uh, product A, it is going to fetch me 5 rupees in profit. If I sell one unit of Y, I can sell, I can um, like uh, make a profit of 2 rupees. Then we'll, you can get the question to, hum sab, sirf A banate na, A mein jada profit hai, to wo bana lenge. Lekin aisa nahi hota, kyunki machine ki bhi jo limitations hai na, usme sab, पूरा x ही बना दिया या पूरा y बना दिया ऐसा नहीं होता है इसीलिए हमको ये सब करना होता है ओके सो दैट इज व्हाई नाउ हाउ हाउ आई रिप्रेजेंट इट इज दिस वे आई विल राइट इट एज m1 m2 ओके दिस इज हाउ आई डू इट So A and B are the two products I'm using. I'm manufacturing. This is X units of A I'm producing, Y units of B I'm producing. How much time does uh, A require on machine M1? Production of A requires two hours of processing in M1 and six hours in M2. Okay. If you have made this, you have no problem. Two hours on M1 and six hours on M2. And uh, B requires 6 hours on M1 and 2 hours on M2. So, 6 hours on M1 and 2 hours on M2. What is the maximum time? 24 hours. Here it is 24. Okay. If you make this, your life will become very easy. Okay. All these conditions are now there. You have already written those conditions. Okay. So, all this descriptive information, I am able to write it in the form of a table with numbers, okay? Okay, so this like here, z is equal to x plus 2y was the objective function. Here, what is the objective function? z is equal to 5x plus 2y is the objective function. This is my objective function. Means what? What is my object? What is my object? Maximize my profit. Okay. <coughs> now, what are the conditions that I have? I can have x is. Uh, what is the value of x that can ha I can have? I can have zero or more than zero. Why I can have zero or more than zero? Okay. So. So, now what will the next step be? Next step will be I want to find the uh, values. Okay. So, this what will be my equation for A? This 
for m1 for the machine for machine m1 what is the constraint these are known as constraint okay constraints are constraint is what is the maximum i can do 2x plus 6y is less than 24 okay for machine 2 for machine m2 constraint is 6 into x. This x and this 6. 6x six plus 2y is less than 24. Okay. Now what I am going to do. And what is the value of x? x can be greater than or equal to 0. Or y is also greater than or equal to 0. Can you have negative values? No. Why? Because you are manufacturing something. I cannot manufacture minus 2 units. Right. So, be very careful, like, you know, be, use your common sense. Hmm? Aapko sirf common sense use karna ki, you know, x or y negative nahi ho sakta. <coughs> Abhi mujhe values nikalne, okay? So, first, 2x plus 6y is equal to 24. Okay, humne equality, second step I am using. And this is 6x plus 2y is equal to 24. Okay. So, let us do one by one. Now, what is the step that we do? I put x is equal to 0. Y is equal to 0. When I put x is equal to 0, what is the value of y I get? When I get put y is equal to, what is the value of x I get? Similarly, here also same thing. Same answer aega ki? Bilkul nahi. Dono alag alag uh, equations hai, alag alag answers aenge. Okay. Now, I put x is equal to 0. So, I get 2 into 0 plus 6y is equal to 24. So, y is equal to 24 upon 6 which is equal to 4. 2 into 0 is 0. 6y is equal to 24. y is equal to 24 upon 6. So, what is the value of y, I get 4. <coughs> Put y is equal to 0. So, what will happen? 2x plus 6 into 0 is equal to 24. So, 2x is equal to 24. x is equal to 24 upon 2 which is equal to 12. So, what is the value I get? I get 12. Okay. Now, here. Put x is equal to 0. So, I have 6 into 0 plus 2y is equal to 12. So, y is equal, uh, sorry, 24. 24 upon 2, which is equal to 12. Okay. So, when x is 0, y is 12. Here, when x was 0, y was 4. Okay. Now, put y is equal to 0. You will have 6x plus 2 into 0 is equal to 24. Or 6x is equal to 24. x is equal to 24 upon 6 which is equal to 4. Okay. <coughs> now I have got both the uh, uh, equations. And now I am going to draw the graph. Now if you use graph paper very good. If not what you are going to do. You are just going to use, solve it by the simultaneous equation. So that. <coughs> You will find the point of intersection also. Okay. So I have 2x plus 6y is equal to 24. And 6x plus 2y is equal to 24. So multiplying this by 3. What do I get? 6x plus 18y is equal to 72. And you have 6x plus 2y is equal to 24. Subtracting minus minus minus. What do I get? 16x is equal to how much is this? 8. 58? No, 48. 48. So, x is equal to 3. Okay. When I solve this, 48 upon 16 is 3. Now, putting x is equal to 3 in equation 6x plus 2y is equal to 24. I have 6 into 3 plus 2y is equal to 24. 
How much is 6 into 3? 18. So you have 2y is equal to 24 minus 18. I take this plus 18 onto the other side. Once it crosses the equal to sign, it will become minus. So 2y is equal to 6. <coughs> y is equal to 3. So what is the point of intersection? Point of intersection of two lines. 6x plus 2y is equal to 24 and 2x plus 6y is equal to 24 is 3 comma 3. Because what is the value of x? 3. What is the value of y? 3. So 3 comma 3. Okay. Now I draw the graph. Oh, there is no place. So, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Okay. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. This is my x-axis. And on my y-axis, I have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Okay. <laughs> First line, 0, 4 and 12, 0. Okay. 0, 4 and 12. This is my 0, 4 and 12, 0. This point. Okay. So, this is my line 1. Okay, this is my line 1. And the second line is <coughs> 0, 12, 4, 0. 0, 12. So, second line, if I use, this is 0, 12 and 4, 0. So, I will just do this. This line is not coming okay. I have to draw between the two orange points, okay? Yes. And what is this point? This is 3, 3. Okay. What is this point? 0, 4. This is 3, 3. What is this point? 4, 0. And this is 0, 0. Okay. So, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. So, I have 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 points are there. So, my E, the matrix E points I have got. Okay. I will just rub this. I hope you are able to understand this. Okay. So, let me. So, now what is my Z? Z is given to me as 5x plus 2y. Okay, Z is what? 5x plus 2y. What will be my E? E into C will be equal to E is how much? 0, 0. Then 0, 4, 3, 3 and 4, 0. And what is my C? C is 
5. 5 is the coefficient of x and 2 is the coefficient of y. Now I will multiply this. Okay, I will multiply this. So how much will I get? 0 into 0 plus 0, 0 into sorry, 5. 0 into 5 plus 0 into 2. Then I have 0 into 5 plus 4 into 2. I have 3 into 5 plus 3 into 2. And I have 4 into 5 plus 0 into 2. Okay, how much is this? This is giving me this 0 into 0. This is 0. This is 0 plus 8. So it is 8. This is 15 plus 6. This is 21 and 20 and 0. So this is 20. Okay. So how much do I, am I getting? This is my 0. This is my 8. This is my 21 and this is my 20. So this is my after multiplication I am getting this. So, where is the maximum profit? Maximum profit is how much? 21. And when does that happen? 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. That is this. At when x is equal to 3 and y is equal to 3. When I manufacture this, I will get maximum profit. So, I hope you've understood this. Yes, once you can do that, you can attempt any question that you are not uh, comfortable with. M1, M2 denotes C. Nasrat, M1, M2 is machine. Okay. They have written, no? Production of A requires 2 hours of processing in machine M1. And? 6 as in M2. So, M1, M2 are machines. Okay. Yes, Y is 3, 16, Y. Okay, Himanshu. Yes, this is correct. <coughs> so, this I will just show you how it is to be done. I will make the, um, like, um, the table that you are supposed to use. So, a company manufactures two products, A and B. Each is requiring machine processing time of two machines. Okay. Okay. So, I have A, I have B. The Number of units of manufacturing of product A is X. Number of units of manufacturing of product B is Y. You have machine M1 and machine M2. <laughs> the first machine can be used for a maximum of 60 hours. So this here you can write 60. M2 you can use it for 40 hours. So below this I will write it. Our product A requires 2 hours on machine M1 and 1 hour on machine M2. Okay, the product B requires one hour on machine M1 and two hours on machine M2. Okay, here there is no objective function. They are just asking you to express the situation using linear inequalities. So, what do I have? I have for M1, you have 2x plus y is less than or equal to 60 and x plus 2y is less than or equal to 40. This is for M1, this is the constraint for M2 and uh, M1 and this is the constraint for M2. Okay. So, you may get this type of question where you just have to find out the, uh, like you have to just express it in terms of uh, the condition or the constraints that are there. Okay. In the fourth question also, I will just quickly tell you, a fertilizer company produces two types of fertilizers called as grade 1 and grade 2. Each of these types is processed through two critical chemical plants. Plant A has a maximum of 120 available in a week and plant B has a maximum of 180 available in a week. 
manufacturing one grade or uh, one bag of grade one fertilizer requires six hours in plant A and four hours in plant B. Manufacturing one bag of grade two requires three hours in plant A and two hours in ten hours in plant B. Okay. So I again have. Okay, grade 1 fertilizer, grade 2 fertilizer. I am manufacturing X unit of grade 1 and I am manufacturing Y units of grade 2. This is plant A and this is plant B. What is the maximum time for plant A? 120, this is 120 and this is 180. So, I will write here 120 and 180. Okay, now X will require how much? Grade 1 fertilizer requires 6 hours in plant A and 4 hours in plant B. So, this is 6 hours in plant A and 4 hours in plant B. Whereas, grade 2 requires 3 hours in plant A and 10 hours in plant B. 3 and 10. So, what are the constraints? You have 6X. Plus 3y is less than or equal to 1. Is is less than or equal to 120 for plant A. And 4x plus 10y is less than or equal to 180 for plant B. Okay. So, this is how you are supposed to be doing it. Okay. Now, draw the graph of the solution set of the following inequality and equality. Uh, X plus 2y is 4 and X minus y is less than or equal to 3. Okay. Again, so what you have to do? X plus 2y is equal to 4. So, X, Y. Okay. When x is 0 and when y is 0. So, when x is 0, you will have 2y is equal to 4 or y is equal to 2. Okay. And second, when y is equal to 0, x is equal to 4. Okay. So, what I am going to do here in the sixth sum, I am going to write here when x is 0, y is 2. And when y is 0, when y is, this is not 4, this is y. When y is 0, x is 4. Okay. So, I can draw the line. Second is x minus y is e x minus y is equal to 3. So, again the same thing. When x is 0, y is equal to minus 3. When y is 0, x is equal to 3. Okay. When x is 0, y is minus 3. When y is 0, x is plus 3. Okay. So, now you have these two uh, values at where they are intersecting on the x and y axis. Just draw it. And then you where the, uh, there is a common area, that is your feasible area. Okay. So, here they have seen. They have shown this and this is your common area. Because <laughs> plus 2 y is 4. And x minus y is less than or equal to 3. x minus y is less than or equal to 3. So, y is equal to greater. So, you will just take this area, common area. Okay, I think we have run out of time. And note, notes, kaise prepare karne hai? Aapko pehle, uh, sab formula jo hai, wo maths ke ho, stats ke ho, sab ek notebook banai hai, usme sare formula lik li chai, okay? So, you must write the formula. You must have a formula notebook, a very thin notebook, which contains all the formula for mathematics as well as statistics. Logical reasoning does not have any formula. So, math and stats, write down all the formula. Every day before you go to sleep, just practice it on a slate or on the notepad in your computers 
और यू कैन जस्ट यूज इट ऑन पेपर एंड पेन यू नो रफ पेपर जो रहते हैं उस पर आप प्रैक्टिस कर लीजिए ओके दिस इज हाउ वंस यू आर कंफर्टेबल विद द फॉर्मूला इट बिकम्स वेरी इजी टू सॉल्व अदरवाइज यू टेक टाइम अरे व्हाट इज द फॉर्मूला वेदर देर इज अ प्लस साइन और अ माइनस साइन बिकॉज एट द एंड यू नो यू हैव हंड्रेड ऑफ फॉर्मूले सो इट इज बेटर दैट यू स्टार्ट प्रैक्टिसिंग दोज फॉर्मूले राइट नाउ ओके यस दिव्या थैंक यू हा दिव्या द नोट हैव ऑलरेडी बीन अपलोडेड ऑन द वेबसाइट ओके सो यू कैन जस्ट टेक फ्रॉम देयर एनीथिंग एल्स दैट यू वॉन्ट यू जस्ट लेट मी नो आई गिव यू दैट ऑल्सो ओके सो दीज आर द क्वेश्चन दैट यू शुड बी एबल टू सॉल्व इन एक्सरसाइज थ्री ऑन पेज थ्री पॉइंट वन थ्री इफ देर आर एनी क्वेश्चन दैट यू आर नॉट एबल टू सॉल्व जस्ट लेट मी नो जस्ट पुट इट ओवर देयर Uh, in the chat box even today or day after tomorrow also i have a session with you so if it is there or you can even put it below in the youtube channel because this is now available on youtube after this live telecast so there also you can uh, of these questions whichever you have not understood you can put it in the youtube channel so i can easily uh, get the uh, questions from there and then uh, i can post my answers also over there okay so we could do that also we could use the youtube channel also for uh, solving your doubts as far as possible i will solve it in the live sessions but there is a restraint because uh, we have to cover such a lot of topic also and so we could do that okay all these questions you know like you can see over here that these questions are all like where you have to read try to understand and then you have to do it okay Thank you all for your patient hearing. Have a great day ahead. Thank you all. Thank you. Yes, Renuka, you like my teaching? Yeah. Thank you so much. Ban kare. <coughs> thank you, Ashok. Thank you.